So boom, check it. They say bad things come in threes, right? Well, mine came in fours. In June of 2019, I lost my relationship, I totaled my car, I lost my job, and I almost died. But that wasn't the first time that my life had been turned upside down. When I was 17 years old, I drank a little too much Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> okay, I drank a lot too much Mad Dog 2020. And literally, my whole entire world was turned upside down. But that was nothing compared to when I was charged with defrauding a financial institution for $88,000 in 2010. I was guilty. So August of that same year, I took a plea deal and was sentenced to two years prison, five years of probation. When I entered the prison system, I was stripped of my name and given a number. J42433. Every day of my sentence, I said that number, and it was a constant reminder that I was no longer to name Jacole Jenkins, but J42433. I had to get naked in a room full of women. We were examined like cattle. I had to turn around, squat, and cough. I had sold myself into the system. When those prison doors closed behind me, I knew that the hope of my life ever being the same again was gone. And for the next 10 years, I would stop living and merely exist. I would become numb. Because of my white collar crime and I was minimum security, I was slated to go to Levy Forestry Work Camp. I wanted no parts of sifting through recyclables or picking, planting, and packing little trees. And there was only one way to get out of going to Levy Forestry Camp, no matter how unorthodox it was. And that was to declare that you were suicidal or homicidal. So I did the only logical thing I could do. I lied and said that I was homicidal. They knew better and sent me anyway. When I entered prison, I was given a series of tests. Because of my high test scores, I was told that I would be a good fit for a teacher's aide. So I tracked down the officer in charge of education and made my case. When I stepped off the bus at Levy Forestry Camp, I didn't step off as a teacher's aide, but as the GED teacher. Helping women earn their GED not only changed their lives, it changed mine as well. And it also made me feel not so confined. In the classroom, I was able to not only stretch my body, but minds as well. In the classroom, I was not an inmate, and nor were the other women in my class. We were teacher and student. When I was released from prison, I had $20,000 in restitution ahead of me. Operation New Hope, a re-entry program right here in Jacksonville, Florida, helped me get my first job just two weeks after being home. My salary? A whopping $6.25 an hour. A far cry from the $60,000 plus I was making prior to prison. But because I was a felon, the companies that would hire me would never pay me what I was worth. The worst part of the prison experience was not the prison experience at all. It was the feeling of worthlessness when I came home. Every month, I had to decide if I would eat, pay rent, or pay restitution. Restitution lost every time. And because I chose to eat and pay rent, my probation was violated. Not because I had committed a new crime, 
but simply because I was serving a second sentence and had been sentenced to live below the poverty line. The prosecutor recommended that I get three additional years in prison. Something about that math wasn't math. <laughs> Around the time that my probation was violated, I had entered counseling and was diagnosed with impulse control disorder, or ICD. ICD is the failure to resist the urge or temptation, and also the failure to think about the consequences that could follow. This diagnosis changed my life. I now understood me so much more, the way I moved, the way I thought, the way I reacted to certain situations. You cannot treat what goes undiagnosed. I wrote a letter to the judge and pleaded for another chance. That chance came in the form of five additional years of probation, which in turn I finally did pay off my restitution. Two years ago to this day, I became a free woman. <laughs> now that you have the backstory, let's come back to 2019 when I lost everything. I was numb. I did not want to feel. I did not want to deal. I was walking around as a shell of my former self, just like prison. The first thing that the prison system strips from us is the hope that we can succeed after we are released. The next thing is our name. The loss of hope coupled with the loss of a sense of identity is a recipe for recidivism. The Harvard Political Law Review states that 600,000 men and women are released from prison each and every year. Another nine million cycle through our local jails. Two out of three of these men and women will be re arrested in the first three years, 50% or more will be reincarcerated. A great deal of these rearrests are due to technical probation violations, and the others are because these men and women can't get past the mistake that put them there in the first place. In 2020, I founded an organization called Everything I Am. We help returning citizens and justice-involved individuals find success in their second chance. I have traveled the country speaking to returning citizens about forgiveness. When I ask them if they have forgiven those who have wronged them, about 75 or 80% of their hands go up. But when I ask them if they have forgiven themselves, their hands go down, just like mine would have if I had been asked that same question. Despite founding my organization, I was spiraling. I was drinking my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. After losing so much the year before, I was numb. A friend of mine noticed my behavior and said, Tanane, one day I hope that you feel like you're enough. Enough? Those words tugged at my coattail like a lost child trying to find his way home. Enough? What was enough? I didn't know what enough looked like, tasted like, or smelled like. With the help of my therapist, I realized that I was trying to be enough for everyone but myself. And I had to define what my enough looked like. And I realized that being enough for me was all that mattered. Finding out what my enough was, was the catalyst to forgiving myself. Forgiving myself for going to prison, forgiving myself for not finishing college, and forgiving myself for every other mistake that was playing over in my mind like sports highlights. You see, forgiveness of self is the greatest tool that returning citizens and justice-involved individuals have on their path to redemption. When you forgive yourself, you are able to let go of what's holding you down and pick up the things that lift you up. In forgiveness, we find hope. And most importantly, in forgiveness, we find ourselves. If you know of a justice-involved individual or a returning citizen that is struggling, 
do not beat them up because of it. Instead, I implore you to ask them, have you forgiven yourself? And today I ask you, what have you not forgiven yourself for? Where are you stuck in life? What mistakes are you playing over and over in your mind like sports highlights? For eight years, I was numb. I didn't think I was enough for anyone, especially myself. I not only felt hopeless, I felt worthless. I do not want those who are coming behind me to take eight years to find their worth. And I sure as hell don't want them to take as long as I did to forgive myself. I am no longer J42433. I am Tanane. I am to name Jacob Jenkins. I'm a recidivism strategist, a reentry expert, a president, a CEO, and as of today, a TEDx speaker. <laughs>